Good morning, guys. Today is Friday, Daily Genius episode three today, episode three. Um, today's a work day, so uh, I fucked with my schedule a little bit and I put in some tentative uh, appointments that weren't firm and so my team didn't book things and so my calendar isn't full like it normally is. Normally it's full from like, well, 8.06 when we start stand up all the way through to 9 or 10 p.m. at night. Um, today we're having the opposite case, so um, I struggle on days like this where I don't have, um, you know, specific things to do that have been defined for me in my calendar. As you can see up here, uh, Everett writes for me every single day the top four priorities in my business that I can work on as the owner or as a dependency in order to make sure that we're keeping projects moving forward. Today, I'm going to focus on um, something that I think a lot of business owners try to avoid. I'm going to spend the day organizing data cleaning up our support desk, focusing on providing our clients with technical support. So today we're going to just capture some content around, you know, operationally, what goes on in a small IT business. Go for it, Jen. Whoa. Gonna follow up with Michelle at Bally, try to schedule a time for her and Christine to yes. meet. Um, reschedule and send Mark a new meeting invite for his Revit thing with you, Alex. Um, I was going to chase to dug down for content, but he did drop the bomb last night that he's going to give us half of what we need, at least for September 22nd event. So I'm going to look out for that and get it today. over. Today. Yeah, today. Today. Look, yeah, so yeah. I'm going to look out for that today and get it over to whomever. Um, I have an agenda I kind of want to review and create for Doug because he is going to be coming back on Tuesday. So okay. For this video? Well, so, no. for a strategy meeting because okay, you said bi-weekly. Weekly. So it. it just is what it is because we need to pin him down every two weeks, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So that's happening. I want to be ready for that. And then I thought I was going to two meetings, but that was just you blind. So you deleted those out. Now I'm just going to fill it with Jarvis <laughs> stuff. Nice. Love it. Good. <laughs> Warren asked me, what is the atmosphere at Measurable Genius? It's a tricky, that's a tricky thing. That's, it's like the atmosphere is always in the mind of the beholder. <laughs> and it, it's a different atmosphere every day. We're a small team operating out of my house, my whole basement, and we're slowly cannibalizing all of the garage and ha more than half of the upstairs of my house. And um, that in itself is an interesting dynamic. The fact that um, we've added new members to the team fairly consistently now for the last year is um, d adds a level of unpredictability. Like, you never know what's going to happen. The whole dynamic changes. It's not just like, well, you introduce a new thing. It's like that thing and everything else becomes different. Um, and there's a lot of transformation that goes on in terms of responsibilities and in terms of the work that we do for our customers demands a lot of different skill sets. And so in a way, everyone who um, shows up at Measurable Genius is expected to dissolve some of the boundaries of identity around having a fixed position or having a fixed label in terms of a role or a responsibility. I don't know, I mean my priorities are to, uh, support board. Yeah. Yeah, today I will be the world's best technical support rep. He's jazzed. I don't mind support, it's not like my favorite thing in the world. I've been doing it my entire life. <laughs> We have 181 service tickets. Yeah. It's a lot of task switching. It is. Yeah. So? So, you're going to do 181 service tickets today. Good. We don't have these expectations on employees to be one sided and to not demonstrate certain characteristics or, or certain behavioral traits, which I think creates a lot of pressure in businesses to behave in a politically c conscious way. That, that doesn't exist here. But also, because I'm totally. Uh, I'm, I guess in a way I'm like I'm an HR nightmare like I'm needing to learn um, that there's rules and that as we grow a company there's there's certain <laughs> extremities of those behaviors that we can cultivate in a, a productive way and um, also let people be people and find themselves and explore where an individual's values are most concentrated is, is what they'll label you know play and so if I can find people who love to play and put them to work in an area that's congruent with that, uh, just really crazy shit happens and a sense of family emerges and um, there's a, a level of pressure I can then place upon those people that they themselves want to take on. I have an idea. Great. Ideas are good too. 
I suggest an improv exercise. An improv exercise? Oh, God. Where you tell a story one word at a time. And we'll go around the circle, whatever direction this is. Okay. That Got sound good? Be cool? Yeah, do it. Try. Okay. okay. Everett, you're first. The. Douglas. <laughs> Was. Very. Warren, you have Silver. Any... Yeah, oh, yeah. Haired. <laughs> Delightfully. Entertaining. And. Full. Of. Juice. Hmm. <laughs> he jumped incredibly optimistically into a large pile of geniuses <laughs> <laughs> so Jen if you had to describe your karate moves in one word <laughs> what would that word be? Poor. Poor. Untrained. Made up. Faux. I would call it faux rotty. And I'm like a unicorn belt in that. A unicorn doing karate. Yeah, unicorn belt in faux rotty. That's like a rainbow colored belt. It's the highest. So that it's makes... over black. That makes you a master then, huh? <laughs> yes. All right. A master of Ferrari. We we look we look forward to seeing Enter the Unicorn, a Gen Co story. <laughs> Coming to a theater near you. Okay, so last night Doug was here for I don't know four hours or something producing content modules in the basement studio, and um, he left his sunglasses. We decided to film a series of celebrity impressions wearing Doug's sunglasses. So Doug, this one's for you. Um, apparently we're gonna play a game. See if you can guess who we're impersonating before the answer is shown. Just here in my studio, bought this new drone, you know. It's fun to fly around in the Harvest Hills area where we live. But you know what I love more than drones and fancy film studios? Knowledge. Just do it! Do it! Yesterday, you said today. Today, you said tomorrow. Just do it! Don't let your dreams just be dreams. Do it! Just try. Do it. Sometimes you just gotta say, what the fuck? and make your move. Yeah, Oprah. Yeah, yeah. Have so much fun, yeah, yeah. Where's Iceman? Okay, that's, that's as far as I got. I'll be back. That was it. These are not the droids you're looking for. <laughs> Perfect. That's it! One of the things that's tremendously important to me is discovering and allowing uh, the genius of the team at Measurable Genius to emerge automatically uh, by not laying out certain expectations or, or by not laying out expectations that I know better how to do something than the individual I've hired who I believe has the skill set and the values and the expertise to do, um, you know, whatever it is they've been hired to do. It's like, I want to discover as much as I can the potential that can emerge from somebody without coloring it and flavoring it with what they're automatically going to expect that I want from them. As long as I'm able to continue to cultivate uh, my team's response in that way, by providing them with meaningful activities that are truly aligned with those values, um, I'm surrounded every single day by shit that surprises me because like, there's a way that then someone can, can bring their full potential to the table. And so what I look for in team and what I think we've done a really, really great job of cultivating here is finding a genius and just saying go to work. And so our culture is a culture of 
things not being right and wrong. It's just how things were and how we want them to be and, and, and what can we learn about ourselves in the past and what's going on in order to move forward powerfully uh, and basically just care and try. Um, I think people want to work with people who care and who try and are doing so in a manner that's not you know, stupid. So I just try to cultivate that. That's the truth. Like, find great people, figure out a way for them to play and be paid for it, and um, organize all that in a way that the marketplace sees value and rewards us all in the form of uh, exchange of value, pay us money. Um, if I can be paid to do what I love and I can help my team get paid to do what they love, then it's been a good day. We set challenging goals for ourselves at Measurable Genius, and I set challenging goals for my life. I set challenging goals for the people that work with me. I set challenging goals for everyone who says, I want to contribute. And the thing about challenge is, challenge is something you're willing to take on when you can see how taking on that challenge is going to be actually something that moves you in your own life forward. I can't convince you. It's either true or it isn't true. Do you want to take this on as a challenge? Yes or no? Your mind knows the truth. And so, the most important thing I can do here in my company and the stated accountability for the CEO according to um, the Rockefeller habits and scaling up is having the right people in the right places. Having the right people in the right roles in any company is critical and the right role for a person is where they have the ability to optimally produce a product or a service for your customer or an internal function for the business that in terms of content and subject matter, the material actions and behaviors and functions of the job has to be what that person would label in their own life meaningful. And so as a business owner, as a leader of Measurable Genius, my job is to find a way to make our contribution to the world meaningful, but not just meaningful in a broad or a strategic sense. My job is to make things meaningful to the marketplace through marketing messaging, to the customer through a sales investigation and discovery and you know, proposition process, and also internally to my team and to the people who I'm asking, will you help me take on this challenge? But for any challenge that's not truly meaningful and important, something you want to tackle in your own life or culture within yourself or refine as an individual, unless you want to work on that skill set, that subject matter, you generally in your life will not sustainably take on that challenge and continue to take those actions over time. And so to me, a critical component of our success is tied to my ability to figure out what's most meaningful to the people who are on our team and find a way to put them in a position where they can have fun, but do so in a way that's challenging and asking them to step up a little bit more than they did yesterday, just slightly uncomfortable. On that edge of helping them do something that rewards them and helping them take on a challenge that's challenging for them, on the edge of those two ideas is where people grow. You know, this episode was an opportunity for us to you know, wake up and ask, what do we want to create today? It was a work day for me. I spent the day on the help desk. Um, it was a work day for Everett, and the girls downstairs were working in administration. It was a work day for Warren, right? You did work too. So, you know, today was a production day at Measurable Genius um, in all departments, and so we decided to have a bit of fun. We did the fun stuff. We still produced an episode of The Daily Genius, which we're going to do every day, and, um, you know, we made some progress 1% every day. That's how we get it done. So, until next episode, we'll chat with you guys later.